Welcome back to Real Positive Radio, home of the positive hits. You already know what it is, man. Look, me and Doc is live in the building, and y'all know how we flex every single Monday. But listen, man, we finna go to the phone lines, because we got somebody exclusive that we been we could not wait to get on this show. This guy right here, man, is absolutely phenomenal, amazing dude. Comes all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we gonna find out more about him. Uh, he is the owner of WSAT. At, I'm going to get that thing right, W-S-A-A-T-L, there there, boom, but listen, with that, without, with, with no further ado, man, look, I'm going to let Doc do the rest of the of the talking, because Doc can give y'all some vital information on this guy, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and what she think about him, Doc, who we got on the line today? <laughs> Introduction, Doc gave you. Ain't she something else, ain't? It? Oh my God! <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm so humble. I don't even want to say nothing to the rest of the call. I just want, I just want, y'all, I just, y'all just go straight to the uh, call man. man I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> hey man, but dig this. Thank you so much for being on the show, man, and taking you know time out your schedule to talk to us, man. But um, you know. I want to let the listeners know, first and foremost, that I have personal dealings with you. Uh, you know, I'm very, very acquainted with who you are, man, and your work. Uh, salute on what you do, man, for the industry and for up-and-coming, up-and-coming writers and artists like myself. But for the people, like, like talk to them about, about who Kevin Shine is. Can you give us some, like, background on who you work with? Because we ain't even touched on that. Like, talk to us about some of the projects that you are responsible for some of the artists bro give it to us oh uh, well you know um early on um i had the, the you know an opportunity to work at a and records and you know of course from a promotion standpoint i worked with sounds of blackness i worked with um main condition and i worked with janet jackson um on the rhythm nation project um and then, you know, after that, I had an opportunity to, um, you know, work with, um, you know, Hidden Beach, you know, with Jill Scott. Um, mm-hmm. and, wow. You know, you know um, I was on over there and then kind of helped them with their whole situation. And, you know, when they first signed her. And then if you move on, I mean, of course, early on, even before he was who he is now, um, I've been like a big part of Kanye West's career. Wow. Uh, since he was 15 okay. years old, all the way up until college dropout. Um, wow. And, you know, and then um, had an opportunity to, you know, of course, work with R. Kelly uh, on the Untitled album, which we got a Grammy nomination, the Hollow Record Grammy nomination. Mm. Yep. And then. Um, go go and back, then go back, go back, go back real quick. Real. Real quick, real uh, quick, did you say R. Kelly? Did you say R. Kelly yes. or K. Kelly? <laughs> oh, R. Kelly? R. Kelly, and then recently, um, you know, within the last, you know, three years, I worked with Ann Nesby and Kimberell mm-hmm. on their project, uh-huh. um, you know, helping them out, you know, and uh, a bit less uh, to just kind of help, you know, break a lot of, and also sign Jacob Lattimore to job at the time, help get him sign, um, at the same time, we got to work on, you know, with um, uh, um, a whole bunch of other people while I was under the job umbrella. But, you know, those were the notable things that I had personally had my hands on. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. You, hey, Doc, Doc, did you, did you, Doc, didn't you say you worked with T1? Dude named T1? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> no, no, no. Hear me, hear me, hear me out. Hear me out. No, you can't give all of the pities in the beginning. Gotta, that's right. That. That's right. That's a marquee situation. You don't throw that out there. That out. <laughs> hey, good cleanup. Good cleanup. Good. <laughs> But you, but you know what? One of the things I just because see outside of the artist that I work with, if you guys want to go into you know that, you know, um, you know, we have, you know, we've helped and worked with a lot of different people who are really on the rise. And awesome. the gentleman that's on, that is interviewing me on this call today is uh, one of my personal favorites. Um, oh man! Because from day one when he came to the boot camp. And he started working with us. Uh, he was so committed to, you know, what we were doing. And I can always say that, you know, you know, when you start working with somebody, they don't, we don't always see eye to eye on everything. But mm -hmm. the, the, the great thing about being family and, and is that you know how to resolve and, and, and progress. And I feel like right. the resolve and the progress of the career I have with, with Tiwan is, you know, and watching him uh, merge. Uh, in, in, in the area that he's that God has called him to be in oh, is, is then one of the greatest accomplishments for me. Praise God, man. Well, you, hey, and I, we appreciate that. Let me ask you this, and uh, I know you've had the privilege of working um, with Tiwan, and I really want to hit on Tiwan more about the writing side of the industry. Mm -hmm. Because so many times, Mr. Shine, individuals are, everybody wants to be in, uh, in front of the microphone, behind the microphone. But I want to talk about what you're doing with writers because it is super duper phenomenal. Amazing. Uh, just to see how you take them to, through that process. What would be some of your words of wisdom to individuals who are uh, who desire to do more on the writing side? What are some of the things that you think are important for them to know as they're starting out? Um, well, I think, you know, I wanna, I'm going I'm to I'm steal something, and I'm going to admit I'm stealing it because... Last night, I was, we had a, we have our conference call um, on for the WSAHEO, which is Writing Sessions of America. In Atlanta, we use the ATF because that's where we're based. But um, we had our, 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 our biweekly national conference call, and we had an opportunity to have a personal call on there. And I asked her a question about, you know, where, where we're headed with this whole thing in terms of the broad lines of music and that being you know, the black and the white issues over, you know, the singing. And I, her, her answer was so on point. She said, there is no color in great songs. There's just Come great songs. It, mm. You know, you just, you know, you're black or you're white or whatever. It's not about that. It's about great songs. It just so happened that what has happened in our culture is that we, we, we have failed to maintain the high level of importance on that particular area because we, we, we opened up this new door called hip hop and we were excited about it. And sometimes we get so excited about something that we, we make it so big. And then we wow. see that there are young, uh, up and coming Whitney Houston's, they're wow. up and coming exactly. Mariah Harris. There's the next exactly. Aretha Franklin's, there's the next Yolanda Adams, there's wow. the yes. next yes. Jill Scott. And they don't rap. Come on now. You know, and, and they mm. shouldn't be forced to have to rap or have to wow. include rap into their music in order for them to exist. Wow. So you can't wow. talk about singers and, and not talk about songwriters because there is no Come such on. thing. Exactly. They, you, you know, you have mm. to have a great song. That is what makes that singer a great singer, the great song. So um, my my thing is, is that I just, you know, I'm not a talker. Um, if I see a problem or I see an issue, uh, I've been in many cases where I've seen a 15-year-old girl in Chicago blow me away, sing every note that Whitney Houston, hit every note, every high note, every note perfectly. And all I can think in my mind looking at her is, who's going to influence her to continue down that path? Mm. Come on. Wow. Who you know, and so... Um, I don't, you know, I come from a place where black, we had black music departments, and so everybody kind of were able to maintain their individuality because we cultivated it. We cultivated it within the culture, and we made everybody important because we made them, um, made them 
live up to their importance through their music, not Indeed. through Indeed. their social media, not through their wow, not through somebody on TV just saying they're you know that they're popular. I mean, being popular is a cool thing, but at the end of the day, what we all have to remember is, is that. We can be popular today and not be popular tomorrow, and not because of the fact that we um, didn't do something great when we had people's attention, but one of the things that we lack to, to maintain is our core audience. Like, we don't, like, if you look at a, a, a Frankie Beverly, he can perform for years, uh, or a Rolling Stones, they can perform for years mm -hmm. because what they have is they have a core following. They, Yolanda Adams might decide to go do a record with Taylor Swift. She might go decide to go do a record with R. Kelly. She might decide to go do a record with, you know, somebody else. But she always knows where she's from so she can go back there because she has a base. Mm -hmm. Wow. A lot of times when we're, we're chasing these hits or we're chasing to get on the radio, we're chasing to be important, we're running away from the people who love us the most. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Oh, Mr. Shine, shine, shine wow. on me. Now, you said something powerful. Takes me back to one of something Michael Baston said a couple days ago is that we are so loyal to stuff that we shouldn't be loyal to, that we mm. lock down our opportunity to have other options. Wow. And, right. you know, so we, we give up everything for one thing, opposed to keeping yourself positioned so that you'll know everything. It's almost like the young person who speaks correct English will say, well, they're acting white. They're acting white mm. because they're speaking correctly, mm. so I have to use Ebonics to be accepted. No, wow. I'm going to speak correctly. I'll use Ebonics when it's necessary, but I also need to know how to uh, exegete the king's language properly. Wow. You, and that's what you're basically saying. Look, you need to... Make the main thing the main thing and keep your core. Oh, my goodness. That, mm. that's, that's hot. That's hot. Now I understand why you were the college professor, Mr. Shine. <laughs> See, why well, yeah. you know, well, you know well, that's well, a professor well, right well, there. Well, I, I have when another question. and all of us were together, and one thing she'll tell you about me is, you know, I, I, you know, I like to challenge people to be greater than what they feel they can be. Mm. And so, you know, it, because I always... And I'm going to tell you where that came from. Um, I used to be a student in theater. I was a top, one of the top directing students at Columbia College. And because I was one of the top directing students at Columbia College, um, I had, of course, my teacher was a you know, white Jew guy, and he was an older cat. And, and you know, and, and we had an incident breakout where um, I felt I was being wronged and I thought he came down on me for the wrong reason. And I went to mm. the co-chair of the department and, you know, because he, he blasted me um, about what went down. He said, no, you, 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 you missed what happened. Uh -huh. He didn't blast you because you're black. He blasts you because you didn't follow directions. Mm. He blasts wow. you because you mm. took things and matters into your own hands and tried to do wow. things your own way. And sometimes wow. being creative is not always about doing things your way. It's about learning the right way. Mm. Mm. Home. Now, 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 speaking of the right way, Mr. Shine, you know, a lot of writers uh, come into this thing that you have, which is a boot camp. Uh, for writers that we're going to ask you to, you know, definitely give us more information on uh, for up and coming writers that may be interested in uh, expanding their gift. But speaking of that, when we, you know, when we enter uh, the songwriters boot camp, one thing we come to learn was there's the art to writing. And one of the yeah. things that you taught me that my team can attest to that I've been doing here recently is the impulse of writing, which is when you turn a beat on, don't sit there and meditate. What's the first thing yeah. you feel? If this beat could talk, what would it say? You know, and, and, yeah. and you know, go with that first impulse. Those where those hits come from. What is it saying? Don't yes. sit there and think 24 hours and try to force something together. Like, talk about that that process a little bit more. Like, what is your science and what do you believe is the key to a great songwriter be, uh, recognizing and coming in contact with the greatness, you know, that lies within them? You know, and, and I'll use you as an example. You, um, you, you, you came to the table with a, a, a tremendous gift. Like your gift was already there, so you knew how to put words together. Yes, you understood um, melody. Yes, sir. You understood, you know. But what I wanted you to understand is emotion. 
Mm-hmm. I want you to understand mm-hmm. what is the emotion of the message. Mm. Because you have to deliver the emotion within the message, not just the words. Mm. That is you know what I'm saying? Bad. So sometimes what happens is that people, they, they tend to take a track. And if it's a good track, they'll just try to come up with clever ways to... To accentuate the track. I know exactly what you're saying. So they, they try to put all of the energy into the track and let the track drive us. But what mm. they don't realize is that at the end of the day, everything you say becomes a conversation out of my mouth. Mm. Wow. And it, and it relates back to an emotion you evoked in me to mm. make me feel like this is the way I should deliver this message to the next person. So what makes me go back to that song is not just that it was a good song, but I like the beat. And not just because I like the hook, the way it made me but I, I was mm. emotionally attached to the message. Wow. 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 So, so, so. so that, that's powerful right there. So that you, is so, powerful. So the emotion this, and the message. My. What, so, Mr. Shine, would, would it be safe to say that, you know, songwriting is is bigger than uh, 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 lyrics and arrangements, but it is more. Yes. About, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And and, that, and sadly, we have gotten away from that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We may, you know, and so we don't write memorable emotional songs. We write clever, catchy, hooky. Now, Doc, now, Doc, how often yeah. do we talk about this? And I say, I say, you know, I get to the point where I, as a songwriter, I'm like, you know what? I think that it's so different now because music used to strike an emotion. Even me with being who I am, you know, as a, as a uh, young man, I remember the girl, you know, I love you. Like I remember yes. the, how it, like soon as it come on at a cookout, it's like people spaz out. Like they ain't like their feeling and emotions is just gone. And it's crazy. And, and today it's like all these clever melodies. And I'm like, you know, I always go places. And, and Doc, with all you can attest to this, I will be so aggravated with hearing all these artists that seem like they just want to ooh and eye each other and give all this ear candy. But I didn't feel anything. It's like I didn't feel nothing. Well, you know, what? The, what, what let me say, Wayne. What happens is, is that whenever you want to bail yourself out, you're going to talk, you're going to cuss. You're going to talk about sex. Yeah. And you're going to threaten somebody. Uh-huh. And you're going to say something wow. The bell out. You know, so mm. it's like you're, the emotion you're evoking is is based on you stealing the emotion, not you earning the emotion. Good <sighs> boy, 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 boy. Woo! Wow. Woo! This wow. thing ain't good, dog. This so thing you know, that's like if we wow. on and we're talking to each other, and then you just all of a sudden call me out of my name, and then I go, and I'm sitting here in shock. Of course, I'm not going to respond instantly. But if you continue to hit me with this, and at some point in time, I have to defend myself, mm. which now puts us in a in a back and forth, which now makes the person watching us go, "Ooh, that's interesting." Wow! 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 And that means we've gotten away from the heart of what the music was intended to do from the beginning. Because years ago, it was just good music. Yes, Everybody could jump on someone's uh, concert, right. concert tour. Now it's all about creating a beat to create an emotion to spark controversy. Oh, you're, still, oh, you're, like said, you're still in the emotion. You're still in it. Still you're, in the really emotion. Not earning it. you're not earning my emotion because you, you, you earned it because you wrote something that just touched my heart. It's just like when we hear the John Legend record. So that you know, he he gives a taste of that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. or yeah, or Maxwell, you get a exactly. touch of that. You know what I'm saying? You get a touch of that feeling that evokes. Ooh. I don't even give Drake to a degree. He he, uh-huh. he's the way oh, he yeah. writes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't even oh, give yeah. him credit from a writer's perspective. Oh, yeah. He's and amazing. How he cleverly does it. Yeah. I consider him to be the R. Kelly of our time in, in right. from a radio melody standpoint. I dig you. Right. Oh, yeah, I dig radio you. Radio and melody. Oh, yeah. And he, has, and he, he does enough, he, he puts enough emotion in there to pull us into the record. Wow. But it, I'm going to tell you something. Go ahead, Mr. Shannon. Go ahead. No, it's getting good. Go ahead. Still, even, even with Drake, even with Drake, you still have byproducts of Drake, which is knockoffs. And people are doing... They're, they're just following what they see uh-huh. everybody's jumping on board with. Mm, so when you, you go in these offices to these record labels and everybody's trying to get a record deal, but the record labels are just trying to, they're trying to feed the beast. 
So when it, we call it Feed the Beast, that means that they, they don't know what the hell is going on mm. in music mm-hmm. right now. But what they do understand is that this person over here has people's attention some kind of way. This person over here has people's attention some kind of way. So what they're doing is they're feeding the beast. Mm. Wow. Wherever they see that people are responding, they're just feeding mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're not at the forefront of it anymore. They're not mm-hmm. the ones dictating this or making this real. They're just. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. Now I'm not mad at them because exactly. I work with a label and I'm inside those systems and I understand how those systems work. So I can't be contradictory and say, well, it's they're, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're a business, mm-hmm. and as a business, they're they're looking for the best way to invest their money to get the best return. What we have to do as creative people and in business of the creative is we have to set ourselves up to 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 set ourselves up to be the people who lead the people back to where we want the people to go. Because by the time we go get the record deal, we don't know what that is and we can't complain about them doing it because we didn't we you can't go to them to do it. You have to do it and then you have to go to them. Wow. You have to pull wow. Wow. Exactly. You know, when you said that, Mr. Stein, what came to my mind, this is so amazing. It's almost like the car dealership. Uh, uh, you could have, you had the Cadillac Escalade. Then every other manufacturer created a truck. It wasn't an Escalade, but it looked just like it. Yeah. You know, it's that same knockoff mentality because this is what everyone was buying. So let's go and create something close to that as possible so we can feed it. Because people right. like this so keep man, that is deep. Well, right. We call that pop culture. Because, you know, and see, what we all have to realize is that pop, pop, what happened is, is that when they phased out the urban music department, what they did cleverly, they kept rock, rock. They kept country mm-hmm. and country, cool. but they made hip hop the standard bearer for urban culture. Mm. And those that did not want to be considered hip hop, they forced you to go join pop as a as a genre, not a, you know as a, as popular culture. Because what pop was at one point in time is if you made great records in rock music, you made great records in pop music, I mean, country music, you made great records in black music, then your record would become popular and all the records that were popular, all those different genres, would then move over to pop music. Wow. And what pop music was, it was a, it was a trendsetter art. It's a trendsetter art. So in a trendsetter art form, there is no such thing as records that stick around. Yeah, you might get a record every now and then that just might be written well enough to stick around. But in that art form, that th- those are here today, gone tomorrow art form. Our art form is that we write music from a core. So we were trying to cater to our people, and it just so happened that our influence and our and, our, and what we and how we do things is so strong that it, it would cross over and it would become popular. But then once it became so popular that it started to affect rock, it started to affect country, it started to affect what pop culture were doing, they phased that division out, and now we don't know what R&B is. But R&B was our version of pop. Rhythm That's and blues. right. Wow. So now wow. we don't have it. We wrote our best rap records when we had rhythm and blues. We wrote some of our best country gospel records when we did rhythm and blues. We wrote right. a bunch of stuff where rhythm and blues was there, but what they've done is they've gotten rid of rhythm and blues because what they want us to do is focus on pop and focus on hip hop. Wow. Well, listen, now, y'all, listen, uh, listeners and songwriters and artists, this was free. We gave y'all, we gave y'all this, this one right here free. If y'all want more from Kevin Shine, want to know more about what he's doing, uh, more about songwriting and just want to go to boot camp like I did and become, you know, a great up and coming artist like myself and, and be like some of the greats that he's worked with. Uh, this is how you reach out to him. Ke- Kevin Shine, like, please let us know how to contact you for interest of people that's interested in the boot camps, etc., bro. Uh, well, if they want to be part of the movement that we're doing, they can go to WSAATL.com. That's WSAATL.com. Or they can go to TheFirmWeb.com. TheFirmWeb.com. You got a Twitter? Or they, can reach, or they can reach out to me and Kevin Shine Firm on Facebook. 
They can reach out to us at WSA ATL on Instagram, or they can reach me at Kevin underscore the letter A, the letter N, the letter R underscore sign, S H I N E on Twitter. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for being on Real Positive Radio. Now, listen, before we leave, we get all of our. Well, like before you before you carry them out, I, I just really want to make sure that everyone understands something that that we definitely have to nail um nail home. You guys, you have listened today to one of the premier individuals in the industry, and T1 said it very firm that you got this one for free. This man is worth every penny. So every when you penny. call him, I would strongly suggest many of you need a one-on-one with him. He can serve as a consultant for you. There is a fee. It is worth every penny that is going to cost you. It's time for you to invest in your craft. If you want to go far, invest in your craft. Invest in having Mr. Shine to be your coach, your music coach, to coach you. Uh, in this area, and it's worth every quarter. Coin is going to cost you. I guarantee it. It'll change your future. It'll change your life. Well, listen, take it on, take it on out, Tiwan. I absolutely co-sign that. It's your main man, T1, Mr. Kevo. On that note, could you please tell the people to live good and to die right? Live good and die right. Y'all heard it right here from Mr. Kevin Shine himself right here on Real Positive Radio. Y'all stay tuned to some good music. Speaking of good music, man, we're going to play some good music on the way out of here. Let's go. To, matter of fact, let's go to some R. Kelly happy people right here on Real Positive Radio. Y'all. Man, thank you.